What's up, guys? Uh, I, I am doing a video. Yes, look at that. A video that I am editing myself, that I'm sitting behind my computer. Look at that. It's not stream highlights. It's not anything else. And that is because I am doing something that I wanted to do <clears throat> during Classic WoW, which was not have a voice crack while I'm doing a video. But here we are. And uh, I'm very excited because I am doing a... I'm wanting to start this YouTube series. I'm, I'm calling it S Fans Burning Crusade. But from now on, I would like to do these videos uh, regularly, maybe once a week, maybe on reset day, and uh, just go over and it's almost like vlog style where I, I go through and I talk about everything that's happened so far in the expansion, right? Or everything that happened in the throughout the course of the week. Right now, it's the expansion, but uh, talk about everything that's happened so far and kind of what my goals are for the next week, what I'm doing in WoW, uh, and maybe throw a little bit of other stuff about me or, or the stream, tell a little bit of other stories of things going on uh, as well. So it's something I'm very excited about. It's something I was very keen on doing uh, in classic WoW and classic vanilla, and uh, I just didn't get around to it, and I kind of regret it, and I didn't want to make that same mistake this time around. Obviously, I stream every day on Twitch, I don't always stream WoW, but lately I've been streaming a lot of Burning Crusade. I know my stream has grown quite a bit as uh, kind of more in the variety direction, IRL direction, doing a whole lot of other stuff as opposed to just doing WoW. But uh, this is something I wanted to do, whether I'm playing on stream, off stream, whatever I'm doing, I think this would be a fun thing, kind of like a regular series to have for YouTube exclusive content that uh, you guys can enjoy. And it's something that for me, I can kind of like have a little bit of a, almost like a, a, a log, a diary, if you will, of everything that happened throughout the course of Burning Crusade whenever we look back at the end of it, assuming I actually keep up with it. Let's get started. So, this is my character. Of course, this is my character so far. I am level 70, and I currently have play time at 60. I have 181 total days played, and... Total time played, I said 60. At level 70, I have six days, 17 hours played. And this is on Tuesday morning. So probably a few hours before you're gonna see this video. First thing that you guys might notice is I got my Grand Marshal title back. A uh, little bit of a, let's talk a little bit about the expansion in general. Overall, Burning Crusade has been outstanding. Believe it or not, Burning Crusade was the most fun that I ever had in WoW. And now, 15 whatever years later, I am having more fun than I had back then. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on. But I have kind of the same feeling that I had four years ago whenever I started this channel. Back with Dracova. I'll admit, I mean, there were times throughout the course of classic vanilla the things just got kind of weird, man. Like co community-wise, like, like you know, externally, right? <clears throat> that came in and affected the mood. It affected the uh, people's perception of classic. It, it just got weird. It affected my attitude. It just it just wasn't really there anymore. And now I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. And I accomplished. I mean, Scarab Lord, Grand Marshal, got them in the same week. As far as I'm concerned, I beat Vanilla. I'm probably never going to play it again. You know, er everything I wanted to get, as far as accomplishments, everything, we're done. We're setting that aside. But for Burning Crusade, we got some things that we definitely want to do. And uh, that actually starts with Arena. That's the big thing for me, is the Arena. And, and let's go on over to the, uh, we're, we're going to go on over to the Champions Hall, to the Hall of Champions. And we're going to check out what gear is available now. Actually, you know what? Before we get into all that, I want to talk about the journey to 70. You know, what the plan was, what ended up happening. Launch day itself obviously was very crazy. If you play on Fairlina, if you're paying attention, Fairlina was, you know, getting DDoSed and this and that. Was... Fairlina, Fairlina had a rough time, but surprisingly, the rest of the servers did pretty good. I play on Fairlina and that one day was really bad, but after that one day, it really, it was really just fine. Uh, queue times have not been an issue. Uh, they added in multiple layers to kind of, I mean, they had, I mean, there was something like the layer add-ons were, were saying there was like 40 layers on Feralina. It was insane. It was insane. I mean, you could go out, you could quest in the world. You could do, you could do dungeon grinding, however you wanted to do it. Now you guys know me. I've talked about this before. If you guys have been watching my channel for a long time, if you guys have known me for a long time, 
I'm not much of a quester, right? Like, I, I, I like to do some quests here and there. I like to mix it up and do both. But for the most part, I play a prop paladin. I put on a shield, holy shield, red aura, consecration, <laughs> bunch of little numbers. That's what I like to see. So I did dungeon grind. I, I dungeon grinded most of my way uh, to level 70. And the plan was initially that me, McConnell, Asman, uh, Clovers, and Abernathy were going to level together. But what happened? Uh, kind of the same thing that happened in vanilla, uh, unfortunately, which is I'm I'm a little bit of a grinder. Okay, Clover's a grinder, Abernathy's a grinder. So so our schedules naturally just kind of like whoosh, just shifted away from each other. So it was like Asmund was asleep, or Asmund was leveling, I was asleep. I'm leveling, he's asleep. Uh, McConnell, he I mean he he had a rough first day and he kind of got behind. So it. It just kind of ended up that way. So me, Abernathy, and Clovers ended up leveling to 70 together for most most of the way, and then we we just kind of rotated people in and filled, and uh, and got to 70 that way. And uh, it was good. I think uh, I don't remember what day we hit 70. I think it was uh, I think we hit it by Friday. And dude, I'm telling you, I, I grinded. I think my first my launch stream was 39 hours, and then I I went 39 hours slept a few like I, how many hours i don't even remember like three or four it woke up and boom hit another 31 hours like that was nuts but m man it was fun i mean it was it, it was awesome it was so much fun but uh, i definitely probably should not be doing that too too often back to back 24 plus hour streams and actually that's happened twice in the last uh, in the last month and that's like a whole whole, whole other discussion I, I i really gotta cool it on the stream hours and all that uh, which kind of has me worried about doing YouTube videos and this and that, but maybe if I'm if I'm planning on doing some YouTube videos, I get a little bit of consistency going, and uh, maybe I will just kind of limit myself off stream a little bit, and I can work on this stuff. Leveling to 70 was great. It was fun. I chose Aldor. Aldor versus Scryers. That's what a lot of people have been asking me. A lot of people have been wondering. Back in the day, I went Scryer, uh, and I remember late Burning Crusade, I was like... I regret going Scryer, but why? I can't I can't remember why I was regretting going Scryer. And what I remembered, and, and though it's good, don't get me wrong, the Shattered Sun Necklace on the Isle of Kualdanas, whenever the Sunwell patch hits, has a uh, chance to proc something, whether you're Aldor or whether you're Scryer. For Scryer, it's a direct damage proc. If you're Aldor, it's a 200 attack power proc. I thought, oh, crit, I'm a PvP guy, I like crit, crit, big crits, big numbers, boom, explode. Um, crit works against resilience, right? The other side of the argument is, sure, crit works against resilience, but why don't you just, like, avoid working against it at all and just go for attack power? So it's like a whole thing, right? I went with Aldor. That's what I did. So I went with Aldor this time around. Uh, I think it'll be great. I think Aldor's going to be fine. I, I think Scryer's okay, too. I, I, I just personally, I just want to do Aldor this time. Uh, and I would say if you're really getting into the nitty-gritty min-max all that stuff Then probably all the is gonna outperform if you're looking at all that y You guys know me especially if again if you've been around here for a long time and how I kind of got started doing all the YouTube stuff I, I used to be very like min-maxy like I I'm I'm the kind of person who I'm not like a classic Andy Right where I don't think oh you got to play this way you got to play this way you got to do this you got to do that I kind of feel like people can play the game the way they want to and get what they wanted to done. They just have to find other people that want to play the game the same way they want to play it. And I've always said, if you play a hybrid, like a Rat, Feral, Moonkin, whatever, you kind of have to play like a level up from what your raid or your guild plays at in order to kind of like earn your spot. That was in vanilla. In Burning Crusade, Rhett's pretty good. <laughs> Like, in, in PvE, it's pretty good. It's it's totally justified to have a raid spot. 2% damage to everybody in your group. Refreshing all judgments on the target. Let's say you got three Paladins and a 25 man. You got Wisdom, Light, Crusader. That is very, very powerful. That is a huge, huge damage buff to your entire raid. And then on top of that, the fact that they gave Alliance Seal of Blood, which is something that uh, you may or may not know, uh, I, I was... I was very vocal about the, the power of Seal of Blood and Alliance not having it and how bad it is and this and that. So, you know, whenever they said they're going to do it, they're going to put in Seal of Blood and they're going to manually program Seal Twisting into the game whenever they're getting rid of the batch. I was ecstatic. I was, I went from being like kind of worried, cautious, like what the hell is going to happen with Burning Crusade 
to whenever I finally got it and got to play with it and test it and, and feel it out, I was like, oh my, it was the biggest feeling of relief. We, we, you know, we got something cooking here. Okay, so I'm happy, I'm excited. The, the damage has been insane. You guys have seen some of the other videos. Like I'll be doing rules and I'll be I'll be peeking at the, the number one spot on damage meters. I'll do battlegrounds and just boom, boom, boom. Like there's that clip at the beginning of the uh, there's that clip at the beginning of the other video where uh, I, I run through and this pre the priest clutch clutch paints up and saves me. But like we go and like we, we wiped out basically two men wiped out an entire war song room, grab the flag, return it, they they go and score. It was great, it was wonderful. <clears throat> so, by the way, I, this episode, this is the first two weeks of Classic, so this episode might be a little bit longer than these typically are. I kind of want to keep these video to, to around 8 to 10 minutes and give you a short little update, but um, this one's going to be a little bit longer. You know, I, I'm going to go through and I'll cut out some stuff and I'll edit it a little bit, some minor editing, but depending on how this first video goes, uh, I, I may work on it a little bit more, and also, uh, I may, uh, may be looking for some editors, some more editors. But we can, we can talk about that in a little bit. You guys have probably, again, if, if you've been watching my YouTube channel, you've seen the video. I did Craft Deep, Deep Thunder. Uh, I, I'm an engineer, so I use this, uh, the Zap Throttle Moat Extractor. I, I spent so many hours in Negrand and Zangar Marsh just <laughs> like flying, flying in a path around the entire zone, getting these moats and... Uh, trying to farm everything out and I definitely I definitely got some help too from people people watching the stream or whatever and they were you know they wanted to they they, they wanted to support donate something so uh, that was definitely a huge help as well so if, so if you guys helped out with that you guys you guys know who you are uh, that was that was also a, a, a huge huge help it's funny the deep thunder itself was not that bad the the leveling up to 375 is a nightmare though that's the expensive part I'm at 114 gold right now so, yeah, it's 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 looking rough. Let's talk about the gear that I have so far. Some of the gear that I've gotten so far. This is my PVE gear currently. My PVE gear currently. I got Overlord's Helmet of Second Sight. This is from the quest chain in Shadow Moon Valley, the Tarongorfing quest chain. Choker of Vile Intent, which uh, I bought with badges. This is kind of a waste because I could have gotten the necklace from Ottoman the Huntsman. There's also, if I don't need any hit, there's also the necklace from the chess event. I went ahead and spent 25 badges on this just to get something, <laughs> but whatever. I, I'm, I saved hard on Bloodlust Brooch because I have a Slayer's Crest, which is just a hair worse, and it, it allows me to kind of uh, stall getting the Bloodlust Brooch for a while, so no big deal. Pauldrons of the Crimson Flight, 40 strength, 28 stamina. This is from uh, this drop for me in Black Morass. I have this Cloak of Malice is pretty good from Shattered Halls. So a lot of my gear, I'm still using like level 60 gear or gear that was just kind of like, hey, we're going to disenchant this. How things are kind of shaking out with the raid or whatever. Uh, I'm getting a little bit less prio right at the beginning, but that that stuff is going to come in soon. Like I've seen tier four shoulders, legs, pants. It's the same thing. <laughs> tier four shoulders, legs, gloves. Uh, we've seen a bunch of the gear that I need. Uh, Ring of a thousand marks from, from uh, Prince and Karazhan. We've seen a lot of the gear that I'm really looking forward forward to getting. Uh, it's just, uh, it, it's just not my turn yet, right? Like that stuff. Gear gear comes and goes in waves. That is how it's always worked in a, in a loot council type situation. Sometimes you get gear early. Sometimes you get two or three pieces in a week, and then you won't get anything for a few weeks. Some, I mean, sometimes you get five or six pieces. It's just, it's just what happens, right? Also, I've been tanking my raids. I think I'm probably going to main ret in raids, it's just right now we have a little bit of shortage of, of tanks and obviously I, got, I can play whatever. I like prot, I like ret, I can even play holy, right? I, I don't prefer it, but I can even play holy if I wanted to. Except I can't, because I don't have any holy gear, because I don't have any bag space. But that's a different discussion, right? I mean, if I had gear, I could play holy. Bracers of Maliciousness, these are like a side grade to Risk Guards of Vengeance. Uh, flesh Handler's Gauntlets. So what I'm using, I'm using these Flesh Handler's Gauntlets and then Shatrath Leggings for some expertise. I have 15 expertise right now. And if I can get the Shapeshifter Signet from getting exalted in uh, Lower City by doing Shadow Labs, Sethic Halls, and Akanai Crypts, then I am going to have about 20 expertise, which will be 5% chance of reduction to dodge, to get dodged and get parried, 
which is huge. That's the most annoying thing ever. Whenever you're DPSing and stuff's getting dodged and then you miss and you you drop your vengeance, it's just a whole mess, right? So that's a big goal for me this week is uh, I, I want to hit Exalted with Lower City and I'm doing pretty good so far because if you take a look, I'm at 10,535 out of 2100 into Revered. So, because I'm still using Band of Acuria and I'm still using Band of Unnatural Forces. So I'm using uh, two level 60 rings right now to get my hit. Oh, wait, this is wrong, actually. I gotta, I gotta get this figured out because my hit's a little bit off. I had a hit gem in another pair of gloves. That's what it was. I gotta, I gotta bump, my, bump my gems up too, to be honest. I, I just got cheap gems for now. And uh, I'll, I, I, gotta, I gotta get some, at least some green gems. But yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm still using level 60 stuff here. I have a lot of level 60 here. I have level 57 Librem of Hope, which is not terrible, to be honest, at level 70. But um, I would like to get the Librem off of... That's another goal for this weekend. Heroic Blood Furnace, the first boss... Heroic Blood Furnace is Nightmare, by the way. But the first boss from Heroic Blood Furnace drops a uh, Librem that gives you 53 crit for 5 seconds whenever you do a Judgment. But I do have Hourglass of the Unraveler. Uh, very good. Very good trinket, and uh, Slayer's Crest is going to do me just fine until I eventually get a, a Bloodlust Brooch. It's not a big deal. Now that we have that gear squared away, I want to talk a little bit about this week being kind of crazy. Because the arenas drop today. When you see this video, arenas probably have already been out. And I'm probably losing my dadgum mind. Because... I have got, like, no resilience. Let me show you my PvP gear, and we're going to head into the Hall of Champions. I got two pieces of PvP gear, and they're not even set bonuses. Because I got the boots, because I was still using chromatic boots, and I got the Grand Marshal scaled leg guards, because I was using... Where you at, dog? Leg plates of carnage. So, I got, like, 72 stamina to 18 stamina. I got, like, a 500 health swing by swapping to these legs. Uh, which is a huge deal. I got the uh, Cobra Hide armor. There's there's another one that's like 40 and it's super expensive. The honor grind is miserable. It's bad. Like I, I'm, dude. I'm I've been talking to Grand Marshals, who are, everyone's like, dude, this is worse than ranking. <laughs> this is because there's like an inevitable like, dude, arenas are coming, arenas are coming, and I want to have the I wanted to have the two piece set bonus, but uh, last night, by the time you guys see this video on Monday. I played Final Fantasy VII Intergrade, so uh, whenever I did that, uh, I, I promised I was going to do that. I had an absolute blast. I loved it. I loved every second of it. It was, it was great. It was funny. It was Mimi. It was kind of weird at times, but it was great. Uh, I love Final Fantasy VII. I love the remake. Can't wait until part two comes out. The variety people love the variety stuff on my stream. My, my stream has kind of grown to be more than just wow. Like I said earlier, it's it's really really cool to have a good strong community like that. That's like wow might be like you know how it started or like even even like the core of like who's there is like you know they, they might be wow players or former wow players or, or whatever or even people who don't play well right or have no interest in wow but people just they just like being there and they like being involved in a good community. That's that's sick right. That's awesome. <sighs> I need to get the two-piece set bonus because my resilience right now is 89. I have the Gauntlets of Martial Perfection. These dropped in Gruul's Lair. Uh, nobody wanted them, and I said I will take them as like a stopgap. To be honest, though, the Fists of the Unrelenting, which are the pre-patch Saffron Gauntlets, are probably going to end up getting used just as much, if not more. I'm going to change this to a Strength Enchant, I think, by the way. i got to figure that out. And uh, Fist of the Unrelenting are basically like Stronghold Gauntlets and Gauntlets of Annihilation from Vanilla combined. Uh, I'm probably going to use these level 60 Gauntlets in PvP for as long as I can. Honestly, I will probably use it as long as I can. Because Disarm is brutal and it sucks balls. So, uh, I'm probably going to do that. I know I can get a Weapon Chain, but Weapon Chains are for losers. And also for people that are not... Uh, zug zug paladins who just want to just see big numbers okay so um yeah that's uh that's basically what, what i got there so I, I put a little bit of resilience in there um other than that dude it is it is it is looking bad um if i had if i had this chess piece what i probably would have done is i probably would have put some more uh, resilience in here and just stack it up as much as possible and uh 
maybe I'll talk. I'm trying to talk about like everything all at once and I really need to cut it down because this video has probably already gotten to be quite a bit longer than what I wanted it to be. But long story short, and maybe I will talk a little bit more about it next week. I'll talk about it more about it. I'll talk more about it on the streams. Um, I'm, I'm looking to do some more battlegrounds this week, get some more PvP gear. And, and also I am looking for a resto shaman on Fairlina because we don't know who on Alliance Fairlina who's really going to pan out as being like good PvP shamans, good arena shamans, good... Because every type of... There's so many different types of skill in WoW. Battlegrounds, arenas, dueling, raids, honestly, even heroic dungeons. They're all different types of skills. Um, and I just have absolutely no idea who is going to pan out to be a good arena resto shaman. So, Bajir and I have talked. Bajir and I are, are going to play together. We're looking for, for a healer, ideally a Resto Shaman, because I think that's kind of what makes the comp with a with a Rep Palin and a Mortal Strike Warrior. I think we are going to tear it up if, uh, if we have the right guy. We'll have a lot more to talk about next week. I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. Guys, just a few notes before you don't close out the video just yet. Okay, one, make sure you subscribe. Do yourselves a favor and uh, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, obviously that helps me out a lot. Liking the video helps out a lot. But also, I might be looking for more editors. This is a video that I'm gonna throw together myself. It's gonna be very quickly edited, if, in case you couldn't tell. Uh, maybe I'll have more, some, more clips and other things throughout the week that uh, normally will be in here. I kinda wanna see how this first video goes and uh, just see how you guys like it. If you guys have any feedback for me, please leave it in the comments below. If you have any questions, if you have anything else that, that you guys want to ask me, I do. I actually go through and I read my comments almost every night before I go to bed. Um. <laughs> I, I, I read my comments and stuff almost. <laughs> yeah. Guns that shoot six. Nice. Oh, dude, he's got thunder and a bunch of greens. <laughs> okay. Anyways, guys, I will see you guys later. Make sure to follow. Check me out on Twitch, SVANTV. My Twitter is SVANTV. Instagram, everything is SVANTV. Uh, I'm so glad that happened. I'll see you guys later. Oh, real quick. Like I was saying, I may be looking for additional editors. Uh, Gorthax is still the main editor for the channel, but I am looking for additional editors that uh, Gorthax will be like managing a little bit. So maybe some WoW videos, maybe some variety videos, all that kind of stuff. If you are interested in that, contact Gorthax, just at Gorthax on Twitter. Uh, other than that, we should be good. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys on stream, or I will see you on episode two of S Fans Burning Crusade next Tuesday. Hopefully. Is this video going to go well? I have no idea. I hope so. I'm out. Bye. Bye. <laughs>